Hey, hi everyone. Welcome to Fresh Learning Academy. Uh, today we have Divya Shpal with us and he has recently placed, uh, been placed with Deloitte and has faced the interview of TCS Prime. So today I would like to ask Divyash to share all the process and procedure along with the hiring process of uh, interview questions which were asked during the interview round so that everyone who is, uh, you know, applying for TCS or is planning to, you know, appear for prime TCS interview could get some insight. So Divyash, uh, welcome on the platform of Fresh Learning Academy. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you all. My name is Divyash. Uh, currently, I am in fourth semester of my MCA and uh, I have done my bachelor's in science uh, from Sri Vaishnava Institute of College in Dhaka. They both are uh, currently, uh, MCA is also from Sri Vaishnava Institute of Management uh, in Dhaka. So, talking about my TCS uh, interview or TCS hold of selection procedure. So, it is started uh, with the return test, uh, which is TCS NQT, which held on 9th of May, if I'm sure, yes. So, in uh, NQT written examination, there were uh, majorly the uh, three sections were there. Was, first was the aptitude and reasoning. They asked the basic aptitude and reasoning. Uh, and then there was the uh, uh, English section, also the English comprehension, which we call. And, but these are also divided in two parts. So, like the uh, aptitude and reasoning first was a basic level. And then there was a, a higher level aptitude reasoning also, which was separated. They both were separated. And you have a specific time uh, time allotted for each section you have. And you cannot switch between sections and all. Mm -hmm. So uh, for this, I prepared uh, basically from the YouTubes and uh, previous questions of TCS, which we can get. Uh, they are easily available on the internet. So apart from the aptitude reasoning, English comprehension, there were coding questions. So okay. two coding questions were there. Was uh, first was the easy one, and second was the uh, little bit medium level, which you can say, and uh, they provided uh, like they yeah, were two uh, in their in their compiler only. Mm -hmm. uh, my language was a Python. Okay. Uh, this one suggestion I would give is uh, like their Python. Uh, for a specific Python, the the compiler is not uh, that much good. I would say as compared to other online compilers which we use. Because uh, sometimes uh, you cannot use tab in there for the indentation in some Python. And in Python, indentation is the most important thing. So you, I use the uh, two spaces for that, uh, which is also an idea I got from a YouTube video only. So this was the whole uh, thesis NQT. So uh, for NQT preparation, I would say you just need to follow the basic uh, previous year questions. You can practice the aptitude and uh, reasoning questions from the previous year paper and also get the comprehension. If you have a decent communication skills and decent knowledge of English, you can easily sail through the comprehension part, I would say. For aptitude reasoning, you need a little bit of a practice and some uh, higher level topics are there like DI or uh, some statics and probability also come in there, which usually don't uh, get asked in the uh, many uh, uh, companies. Other companies around. maybe, okay. Yes. So this was there. And then for coding, you can uh, follow one coding sheet is there. Uh, just search on Google, the TCS uh, NQT sheet. You will get the first link of Take Your Forward website is the name. You can follow that and you will be good for the coding round. Now coming to the interview part. So my interview was in Acropolis College of Indore, not in the TCS uh, office. So for that, uh, uh, one thing I would say, you need to free your all day because it can take a time. You need to wait uh, like last amount of time to get your interview schedule uh, in there. So my interview uh, happened around 6 p.m. in the evening. Mm -hmm. So in interview, there were there were panels of different panels of interview. And in my panel, the three members will be there. First is the technical, one will be the managerial, and uh, another one will be the HR. Mm -hmm. So my interview started with the technical and NAMAR. Okay. Uh, so they will ask the questions according to your resume only. Whatever you have written your resume, they will ask from that. Uh, mm -hmm. Starting with the intro, basic intro, they will ask whatever you can introduce yourself, your education background, and any skills and projects you have done and if uh, you're pursuing anything currently like if you are uh, taking any certification or courses and learning any new skill you can mention that also okay. so i did the same and thereafter they will pick up the topic according to their expertise also like sometimes mm -hmm. it depends on the panel also in my resume i mentioned python and sql as a language and other and the uh, and the mern stack for development but the interviewer who was taking my interview he was the java development uh, he was the java developer i believe Mm -hmm. So he asked questions me regarding the SQL because he okay. had more knowledge in SQL, not in the Python. So he uh, asked that he gave me certain queries to write in the SQL. 
and then uh, he asked about the basic uh, concept which were the which were asked in the major companies like concept and the uh, in-depth concepts of sql like trigger what is trigger uh, what is cursor uh, what are different types of joints in there in the sql uh, how can you uh, normalize the tables like if uh, there is one nf so what are the conditions of one nf two nf three nf these were asked to me and uh, apart from that uh, some questions of software engineering were there like what are the uh, uh, steps of uh, process model what different type of testing you used in your uh, uh, so this projects or what type of testings you have done what uh, knowledge you have what different type of textings are there they can ask for that and uh, they uh, want you to connect it to real world if they ask me oops concept if i explain them the whole four all four concept of oops so they want me to give a, a real life example based on it like how can you uh, uh, how can you connect it with the real life like for inheritance, how can you do that? Or uh, what? Uh, how did you, you did you use in your uh, project? So mm -hmm. you can uh, give example like that. So these were there. And the uh, second thing is I would like to mention is uh, if you have written anything in your resume, especially for prime and digital interview, I would say they uh, expect you that you have a good hands-on experience on that okay. because like the the query they ask uh, was uh, I would not say much difficult, but it was uh, of certain level. It was not at all um, very easy, which anyone can do that. So mm -hmm. you need to have some experience in SQL or some experience of any language which you are uh, which you are mentioning your resume. And second thing is uh, somewhat it depends on the luck also. Because uh, uh, like uh, in my panel, the interview was a Java developer. He uh, he or she can be a MERN developer, which I mentioned in my resume. So he could have asked the very in-depth questions of MERN exactly. to me. Yes. yes or he could be python developer mm -hmm. so whatever uh, basic thing in interview you should be careful whatever you are mentioning resume you should practice that you have uh, you should have good amount of like in-depth or not say uh, really in-depth but you should have good amount of knowledge if you are uh, doing the coding in that language or if you are mentioning the technology you should have good knowledge like how these things works in, in the internally in that language because they can ask and uh, secondly you need to correlate things you need to mm -hmm. correlate things with the real world if you are giving any example of uh, oops or if you are giving any example of software engineering like solid principles so you need to have uh, a basic example how uh, where these the technologies are where these concepts are being used in the real life so this was it and uh, my interview was probably around uh, 30 to 40 minutes max and 20-25 uh, minutes for of uh, trmr Mm -hmm. uh, yes, they also asked uh, for problem solving. They asked me puzzle related questions. Okay. Uh, like uh, one question was their puzzle related, which uh, was if you were given five liter beaker and three liter beaker, so how can you measure the four liters in them? Mm -hmm. These were the basically the TR MR round. And then the HR would uh, like, go through all your files and all your certification. And the HR was not much lengthy, it was like five to 10 minutes uh, okay. approx. So the HR just asked me about. Uh, a gap of one year so they asked me about the gap and uh, if you are uh, willing to relocate if you are okay with a relocation and the basic background check this was the okay. so this was it uh, that's so it. Uh, that's they were, it. Uh, because uh, the main idea behind recording this video is so that you can help out uh, your juniors and students who are looking forward you know to apply for prime so as you have already described i feel that it was more into the technical side I just would like to ask uh, you a few questions. That Devesh, do you feel that uh, practice will definitely be needed? So one should have, you know, hands-on experience along with practice if he or she is planning to appear for the interview with TCS. Absolutely, uh, I believe uh, practice would be really much uh, required because uh, uh, by mock interviews and all other things, you get an idea how questions can be framed, uh, how exactly. you can uh, frame your answers accordingly, because uh, it happens so many times uh, you don't uh, get that correct answer in your mind on spot. So mm -hmm. sometimes uh, you can get stuck at that. So I believe practice would really be required uh, apart from the technical, also for the HR like interview rounds also you need to have a good practice. And uh, I believe doing mock interviews frequently will help. Uh, like for mm -hmm. me, but at the time of Deloitte also, the mock interviews helped really much. Uh, and they uh, actually helped me in my thesis interview also because mm -hmm. uh, I really didn't do any mock interview at that thesis time. But uh, the mock interviews done at that time was uh, really helpful at the time. So I believe practice is essential. Relationship before your interview, even if you're giving written examination, you should uh, give one or two mock papers also. 
great so any of the uh, you know um, what we can say suggestions for your juniors that what are the things they should exactly go through in terms of technical what are the specific languages that can act as a basic languages if you are appear, applying for any of the interviews with tcs uh, so as a language, uh, I would not say to follow any particular language. Mm -hmm. I was a Python developer, so I followed Python. You okay. can choose any language. You can be C++, Java, any good. But uh, I would say uh, if you are doing any project on that, if you have, uh, if you are doing like DSA questions on that, one basic thing to learn language is to do the DSA questions in that language. So I believe uh, if you are practicing coding questions, if you are doing some projects in that language, so by that you get a fair bit of idea about the language itself. What are what can be technical questions uh, can be framed, and uh, for this uh, you can also like sit down one day, just try this this concept I know, and you can frame yourself what can be asked in this mm -hmm. uh, concept, what can be asked in this language. You can just write that down, you write the answer at there also, so you can evaluate yourself only. And uh, therefore, uh, and thereafter, uh, yes, the main come the project. If you're mentioning like your language is different, mine mm -hmm. was the Python, and my projects were in Mern. So okay. to prepare both mm -hmm. because uh, they can ask in the both. If you have done a project in a full stack, uh, so there are plethora of things to uh, which they can ask. Like it can be React, Express, uh, more uh, MongoDB, anything they can be asked. So other thing is they you need to have a basic set of questions. There are basic set of questions. You just search in top 30 interview questions of React.js or MongoDB or Java. Mm -hmm. They will be they will be basic questions. You can prepare first those basic questions. And now if you feel you are confident enough in those questions, you can uh, elaborate them, explain them to anybody easily. Then you move on to some higher level questions. You mm -hmm. can uh, start incorporating examples, uh, examples from your experiences if you have encountered them such or you can uh, take examples from YouTube of different developers also. So mm -hmm. this way, I believe you can practice for the technical. And uh, uh, for HR, I have said, I, you need to practice. So you need to do mock interviews. You cannot mm -hmm. practice just by writing and mugging up the questions of HR. Mm -hmm. Because there can be a lot of different questions at yes, HR. Yes, exactly. So, I, so yes. I believe the mock interview is the best for the HR room. So being an MCA student, Devyash, what will be your suggestion? What is the right time to start preparing, uh, you know, for the placements? Uh, I believe as an MCA student, if you are currently in a second semester, I believe this would be the very perfect. You can start from the day one of your MCA. Yes, exactly. Uh, because uh, aptitude and reasoning, they take time. If you don't have any knowledge of uh, written aptitude reasoning, you have never attempted any competitive exam or anything. So you need to start from the scratch. So I believe we start with your aptitude reasoning and side by side also work on the communication skills because uh, my whole interview was in English only. They okay. were never really allowed to any uh, word of Hindi. So communication skills comes in that. Uh, and uh, especially from the students of the Indore area, I would say, or mm -hmm. the middle region of the India, uh, there is a really big uh, communication gap, I would say, communication skills gap. So we have... Uh, stage fear we have fear to talk in english so then that can only be resolved by talking in english or going on the stage so start from aptitude and reasoning and communication skills side by side and thereafter after completing the basic uh, topics of the aptitude reasoning you can just start practicing their questions and start to your uh, english, comp english comprehension i would say because that too take time you need to have uh, develop that understanding you need to understand the uh, passage what what is asked in the passage what are they asking what is written in that and uh, and if you are pursuing as an mc you are pursuing technical degree so you will have technical knowledge side by side with your degree so first thing uh, you can uh, just complete the aptitude reasoning and start with communication skills so uh, and then you can move on to English comprehension. And then uh, by the time I believe uh, you get to third semester, because you can apply in third semester also in the, for NQT. So by the time you get to third semester, you will have one or two projects in your hand. You will have some clarity what language you are going to pursue. So you can uh, apply for that. You can mention them in your resume and you start working on them. Mm -hmm. So I believe it would be better if you start from first day of the college. So, Devyash, I think that there might be, if anybody is going through the, uh, you know, complete interview of ours, so he or she might, uh, you know, write in the comment box, why did you apply for TCS Prime if you are already selected for Deloitte? Maybe we will cover up this question in the uh, later part. 
uh, I will request you to again connect with me over this platform so that you can give a brief idea about your Deloitte interview experience. For today, I feel that uh, everything you have described in detail. So any one of you, if you are preparing for TCS, either it is a Ninja, Digital or Prime, please make sure that you have hands-on experience and you really practice everything which is, you know, which was shared by Devyash. So thank you, Devyash. Yes. Please. Uh, just the one thing I would like to mention, like uh, this MNC is like TCS Infosys, they are uh, really strict on their criteria also. So if you do not fall in that criteria, like 60% rot is required in TCS. Mm -hmm. That's throughout they mean 10, 12 graduation and if you're doing post graduation in that also. So there was uh, like a document verification was done before the interview. Mm -hmm. So they checked all of our marks. So even if you have 59%, I believe you should not applying that because yes. uh, but later on you get rejected the the whole your uh, whatever the hard work you have done will get raised so it's uh first read the eligibility criteria only then if you're fitting in the eligibility criteria then apply and then go on otherwise so uh, i would say it would be a waste of time if you apply for thank that. you for bringing this up devyash because uh Few of these students, they just think of just for the heck of applying, they do apply without checking the eligibility criteria. And I feel that may result in dissatisfaction. So thank you for bringing up this point. So I would also suggest you all before applying for any of the job profile, if you exactly want to get that offer letter, be very much sure that you are meeting the eligibility criteria. So thank you, Devyash. And in case if you are getting any uh, questions in the comment box, I would definitely uh, like to invite you again to just, you know, solve, uh, solve or sort out those queries which will be asked. So thank no, you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, ma'am.